along the northeastern border of India lies the Kingdom of Nepal, dividing Nepal from Tibet, the Himalayas, the highest mountains in the world. Under the Himalayas, in the high villages of Khumbu, live a people called Sherpas. The village of Tami, 12,500 feet up in the Himalayas. The first man to stand on the top of Everest, Sherpa Tenzing, came from this place. This film is about three brothers from Tami. They've chosen three very different lives, but the choices they made tell a good deal about what being a Sherpa means and how rapidly it's changing. Most of all, this film is about a tension that runs through Sherpa life, a kind of separateness which holds people apart. But that separateness also lies behind the self-reliance which has taken Sherpas to the top of the highest mountains on earth. This is how the outside world usually sees Sherpas, carrying big loads up big mountains. On Annapurna and Kanchenjunga, on Makalu, and most memorably on Everest, the world's climbers have relied on Sherpas. These people are on their way up to Tami village, carrying provisions and equipment for the unit making this film. In the group are three brothers from Tami. Two of them, scattered by the lives they chose, haven't seen the village for years. Mingma is the leader of the group. His job is as a Sirdar, the head Sherpa on expeditions. Mingma's two brothers have chosen more traditional Sherpa lives. Dorji is a Buddhist monk. The third brother is Poa Tensing. He's a farmer. And for him, Tami is still home. There are about 20,000 Sherpas in Nepal.
The Sherpas migrated here from Tibet about 450 years ago, and contacts with Tibet in trade and religion have always been important. Today, for the men and women in villages like Tami, farming and yak herding must provide a basic living. Each family can produce what it needs to survive, so there's no need for cooperation in harvesting the only crop, potatoes. You can see the patterns of Sherpa life in the patterns of the village itself. Each family's house stands separated from the next. The boundaries of each family's fields are precisely defined. All property is privately owned, and there are no leaders here with power over other people's lives. Every family keeps to itself and sorts out its own survival. But the price they pay for their separateness is often a lack of cooperation and community. <laughs> November is the dead time of the year in the fields. Like everyone else in Tami now, poor Tensing's daily worry is fuel to cook and to keep warm. Fuel means precious dry wood, and that means more load carrying. The nearest suitable trees are more than two hard hours away, 14,000 feet up on the side of a mountain. For poor Tensing and his wife Aikami, it means a start not long after sunrise. เวจิกลาพาสมบลากุมพูชิงทีวีเอ่อสรุรุยามาดีรงลาดีเพลาดีเพลาปินจีวีธรรมที่อารุดาวะทางบูเชิดสมามีอยู่คังบอกคนนี
Now, the long haul back to Tommy. This time, each with more than a hundred weight of wood on their backs. For poor Tensing and his wife, it's a routine day. They expect to make this trip five times a week, every week, at this time of year. Six and a half hours after leaving Tommy, Poor Tensing and I, Kami, are home. The next day, I, Kami, went back for more wood. <laughs> the reincarnate Lama of Tami Monastery. When he was two, he was discovered to be the reincarnation of the previous Lama. Since then, he has been the Rinpoche, the precious one. On a mountainside above Tami village is the Lama's monastery. Poor Tensing's brother Dorji is on his way to visit the Lama. For the last two years, Dorji's been living and studying at a new monastery in Kathmandu. Buddhism teaches that it's the job of every individual to seek his separate salvation. No one can save another. Whether you're a monk like Dorji, or a farmer like Poa Tenzing, or a Sirdar like Mingma, daily life is partly a preparation for reincarnation. By gaining merit and avoiding sin, you ensure for yourself a good life next time. It's no accident that the Tami Monastery stands apart on the hillside. Monks like Dorji have withdrawn from village life to pursue their own salvation, separated from worldly concerns. For most people, the point of making merit is to get a good rebirth. But for monks, the aim is to escape the cycle of death and rebirth altogether. Only two or three Sherpas in every hundred become monks. Boys can be sent to begin a religious life as young as six. For most, it's expected to be a lifelong commitment. For Sherpa parents to have a son who's a monk is a powerful source of merit. <laughs> Kombala, 
Macam macam ni nama. Kita tu, ah ya tu, maju, uli tu, sanya tu. Tak kacik kunci. Di toko di tempat cuci hati. Tempat tempat nak guna mesti fokus. Orang tak cuma ikut begini. A healing ritual in the Tami Monastery. The ritual has been commissioned by Dorji's father, Aosumi. Aosumi hopes it will help to cure his persistent nosebleeds. For a whole day, these monks will read the sacred books exclusively for our Sumi. In return, he will pay them and feed them. The reading will create merit which should promote our Sumi's cure. It's taken him a year to save up for this. The monks would need a month to read the 108 holy books right through, but our Sumi can only afford a single day. So the monks read a few pages of each book and then pass on to the next. Since the books are truth, it's only necessary to give them an airing, and for everyone it's a business-like occasion. Asumi doesn't even need to be here for most of the time. He gains merit from supporting the monks while he's busy in the monastery kitchen preparing their food. Dorji said his father's illness was the result of sin in a previous life, but it might be wiped out by this ritual. In avoiding sin themselves and pursuing a good rebirth, Sherpa monks must renounce marriage and so avoid the trap of worldly concerns and obligations. For a monk to break the vow of celibacy is to destroy his chance of salvation. There'll be a wedding in this house the day after tomorrow. Today, as well as preparing huge quantities of Chang, the Sherpa beer, there are some vital practical details to be sorted out. Although there is a monk here to read sacred text, his presence is a formality, and he'll play no part in the wedding. For above all, Sherpa weddings are about property and possessions. The bride is still living here in her parents' house, but she's had an open relationship with the groom for the past four years, and they've already had one child. Sherpa marriage is a lengthy business and can take years to complete. The main reason for the delay is that marriage means inheritance. As well as losing a working member of the family, the bride's parents must provide an extensive dowry. Her husband will inherit a house, fields and animals. It all means that there's no room for sentiment in recording the details. <laughs> Tommy 
Je te dis que tu es là, tu es là. Tu es là. Tu es Tu es là. 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 Tu es Tu es là. 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 Tu es Katang Tambola Sir Tola Tola Chila Gor and Jatang Gor Nija Jaju Tamba Gor Nija Jaju Tamba San Chila Gor Tu Gor Tuju Tamba Gore Reto Chigla Gatang Shipju For the bride's mother, the packing of her daughter's diary is just the beginning. The next few days will mean the exhausting and expensive entertainment of more than a hundred guests. For the bride herself, the wedding means lots more work. For the village of Tami, a wedding is one of the very few occasions when the separateness of families and individuals is bridged, and just for a few days, there's a sense of community. <laughs> After the days of preparation, it's the morning of the wedding. The groom's procession comes over the ridge from his village. Shielded by an umbrella to ward off evil spirits, a member of the groom's party blesses the beer, offering some to the gods. Chang has a crucial part in every Sherpa social occasion. It creates an atmosphere where people feel able to get together. In the middle of all the celebrating, the groom stands quiet and almost unnoticed. His bride is still working in the house. They're not the center of attention. The wedding is really about inheritance and about bringing together Sherpa families who spend most of their lives absorbed in their own affairs. In the chaotic gloom of the house, the actual ceremony is over in a moment. Now the village can get on with the really enjoyable part of the celebrations, an all-night round of dance parties with yet more Chang.
the next day. The newly married couple are ready to leave for the groom's village. The groom's relatives celebrate gaining a new member of their family. Some of the bride's relatives try to capture one of the groom's party to pay a symbolic ransom for the departing bride. But the real meaning of this event is in those loads on the girls' backs. The procession celebrates the creation of another separate family unit, heading off with their own property to their own house. Years ago, this was a quiet Sherpa village called Lukla. Today, thousands of tourists from all over the world fly into Lukla every year to begin their trekking holidays in the Everest area. For Sherpas who remain in Kumbu, the fact of tourism means rapid change. For Mingma, looking after his father's animals 12 years ago, it meant a new life. <laughs> Midosab 
Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. Tami and Kumbu are more than a hundred miles away, but for thousands of Sherpas like Mingma, Kathmandu has become home. This is where the tourists arrive and where the jobs are to be found. Mingma moved down from Tami to live in Kathmandu with his family 10 years ago. Now, though he's away for much of the year on treks and climbing expeditions, his home is here on the ground floor of a house in the Sherpa district of the city. Mingma's wife, Pasang Lamu, serves lunch for 20. For some years now, she's made this front room available to Sherpas from Tami, who are in Kathmandu looking for work. Pasang Lamu makes a bit of money selling beer to her guests. Most of the Tami Sherpas staying here today are just back from a successful ascent of Manaslu. It's Saturday, so Mingma's five children are at home from school. The school's just one reason why Mingma and his wife prefer to live in Kathmandu. Their son Ang Sultim is another. Ang Sultim came to Kathmandu with his parents when he was a baby. Within months, he caught polio. It left him unable to walk without crutches, an impossible handicap on the steep tracks of Tami. <laughs> Four years ago, Pasang Lamu had another family tragedy. Her father was killed on a mountaineering expedition. The mountains of Kumbu present their own problems for Mingma. It isn't just a matter of avalanches and crevasses. Mingma is an experienced high-altitude climber 
who's already led a number of successful international expeditions. But in some ways, the personal problems of trying to cope with the sensitivities of his fellow Sherpas are even more daunting for a Sirdar like Mingma. On Everest, those problems would be especially severe. For traditional Sherpa farmers, like Mingma's brother, Poa Tensing, life inside the family household seems unchanged. But there are profound changes here in Tami as well. This used to be the time of year when many Sherpas like Poa Tensing would travel to Tibet to trade. Since the Chinese occupation of Tibet, things have been very different. Now, trading is strictly controlled and young men have been forced to take up tourist work to make a living. The dwindling trade with Tibet has become an old man's affair. These yaks belong to Poor Tenzing's father, Ao Sumi. Tomorrow, they'll be carrying his goods to Tibet for trading. This evening, the yaks have been rounded up by a fourth brother, Hlakpa. Like a considerable number of Sherpas who suffer from a serious iodine shortage in the Kumbu water, Hlakpa was born retarded. He has remained at home with his parents all his life, helping his father with the yaks. The journey to Tibet, up over the 19,000-foot Nangpala Pass, will take six days. Asumi is 65 years old, and his family have gathered to see him off. His wife is here with a grandchild. <laughs>
As our Sumi follows his yaks towards Tibet, he scatters rice for the gods as a protection for his journey. It's an image of Sherpa life that hasn't changed in hundreds of years. But in our Sumi's own village, a source of real change is impossible to ignore. The Tami School was one of half a dozen schools for Sherpa children, founded by Sir Edmund Hillary in the early 60s. The song is the Nepalese national anthem, and the children are singing it in the Nepali language. In the last few years, the Hillary schools have been taken over by the Nepalese government, and Sherpas complain that standards have fallen. But schools like this have produced some of the most able students in the whole country. And inevitably, educated Sherpas have left the villages of Kumbu in search of better opportunities. None of the three brothers was young enough to attend this school. But Mingma has learned the value of education the hard way, teaching himself to read and write and to speak foreign languages. And he's determined that all his children should get an education. <laughs> But Mingma is aware that a traditional Sherpa option does still exist for his son, religion. Tangaunsa, <laughs> For the monks in Tami Monastery, the patterns of life seem largely unchanged. But they have lost their previous monopoly on Sherpa education. Nevertheless, partly due to its comparative isolation from the tourist tracks, Tami Monastery remains one of the most thriving in Kumbu. Today, the monks are beginning a major ritual, Dorsem five days of text reading, music and ceremony for the spiritual purity of the monks. The climax of the Dorsum ritual will be a rare coming together of monastery and village.
After five days of ritual in the monastery, the final afternoon of Dorsem has arrived. For the villagers, this is marvelous spectacle. But they're simply onlookers as the monks complete their own purification. First, the music attracts the attention of the gods. Then, by burning the symbols of Sherpa life, food and cloth and wood, the monks seek the protection of the gods. In the process, the monks become near gods themselves. Inside the monastery, the climax of Dorsem has arrived. This is the Sewong, which means life power. Now the monks move beyond their concern for their own salvation. After the days of purification, they're empowered to hand out long life to everyone who has come here. For Sherpas who are still living a traditional life like Poa Tensing, this is a familiar landmark in the year. For his brother Mingma, it may be years before he stands here again. A picnic in the botanical gardens Kathmandu for Mingma and his family. <laughs> Mingma's children are already much further from Kumbu than their parents. Only two of them have ever seen Tami. None of the children speaks the Sherpa language. <laughs> Lumbotikbe, <laughs> Share <laughs> Kurukuni Kalayemsa was not mingling away. Sherry Lepshire, Dorsin, Sherry Ming, don't do it. 